Calculus! This is AP Calculus. My throat is sore, so I can't have too epic of an introduction, but we are in the analytic analysis of the concave up, concave down, and inflection points of functions, where we, in the unit guide, we are right over here, 3-8. Um, so we are on the last lesson before we do self-checks. Today's Friday, which means self-check 3-1 and 3-2 are on Monday. This is Tuesday. Oh, so Wednesday is actually our pre-test, not our test. Thursday is our fix-up, and then Friday is going to be our test. Each one of these is a day. I'm going to be gone Friday. You're going to be gone Friday for cross-country? Yep, okay. You're going to have to make that up when you come back, or I can somehow do a take-home and make you sign a contract. We'll figure that out. All right, maybe you can take it a day early, too. I don't know. We'll be here on Thursday. We're leaving, I think, after school on Thursday. Okay, yeah. Uh, we'll work something out. Um, so analytic analysis. So... This is now the F double prime test, the second derivative test. Um, so we're just adding on to everything that we've been doing. We have to do our same number lines just as before, and now we're just going to make it that much more complex. So what is step one? Draw the x-axis. Draw the x-axis. There it is. So there's my x-axis. Yeah, thank you. There's my x leaving room, jumping down all the way to here. All right, so what's the first thing that I always do? Take the derivative. Yeah, take the derivative of f prime of x. I don't want to do this in black. I want to do this in blue. Um, skipping space, so f prime of x is equal to what? Someone shout it out. 3x squared plus 4x. Mm -hmm. 3x squared plus 4x. All right, and since we know we're going to be taking the f double prime test, we might as well just find the second derivative right away. f double prime of x is the derivative of the derivative, which means that's the derivative of this function. And I guess I should be color coding this now that I'm thinking about how I actually want to do with those notes. I can change all of this to, oh, let's see if I can do this. Still learning the technology. It's thinking, and then boom, and that means I can come over here to orange, which means my second derivative of x is what? 6x plus 4. There it is. All right, so let's work with the first derivative. Um, what are we going to do? What are the first step? Or the I think it's step three now. Or no, we're on step two still. Step two is finding... Inflection points. Yeah. CVs. CVs, yeah. So CVs, uh, CVs happen where? What's the definition of FCV? F uh, prime of x equals to zero. Or, or x exists. Perfect, yep. So um, it's not going to, we're not going to have a not exist because we don't have a fraction. That's when the denominator is set equal to zero. So we're only looking where f prime is equal to zero. So tell me what to do. Well, it's like say you put f prime of zero. Yeah, you can't say f prime of zero because you're not plugging zero in for x, you're plugging zero in for f prime. Uh, so it, it does matter in that respect. All right, how do I solve this? Factor f prime. Okay, so when I factor, I have zero is equal to what? x times 3x plus 4. 3x plus 4. Zero product property means I have two different possibilities. What are they? Oh, yeah, skipping ahead. I like it. Skipping steps. Um, yeah, you set it equal to 3x plus 4, subtract 4, divide by 3. We get this. Perfect, perfect. So what did we just find? What are these things? The concavity. I mean, not the concavity. The CV. CVs, yes. So let's go ahead and label CVs on our x-axis. So we have negative 4 thirds, and we have 0. All right. Let's test out a point over here on the left-hand side. What's a good point to test, the easiest negative thing? Two. Yeah, negative 2. That's a good one. So when I check negative 2, is it a positive? And what am I plugging negative 2 into? F double prime. Yeah, F double prime or F prime? Yep, haven't done anything new with F double prime yet. So we haven't hit our new stuff. So just plug it in F prime, uh, plug it in negative 2 to this X, and this X, that gives me what? It's positive or negative? Negative 2 is the square equals 4, 4 times 8 equals 12, negative 2 times 4 equals 8, 12, 12 minus 8 equals a positive. Yeah, that's some fast mental math there. Positive and then what does that mean? 
that means it's um, F increasing. F increasing. It does mean that. All right, what's a good number to plug in in between negative four thirds and zero? Negative one. Yeah, I would agree. Negative one is probably the easiest number. So I know Rochelle's really good at her mental math. I want to hear from someone new. Is it positive or negative? Negative. Negative? Yes. Uh, Rochelle, Ben, you agree or disagree? I agree. Agree? Yep. So that means, um, arrow, it's what? Um, F decreasing. F decreasing. I don't know why I can't spell that. Decreasing. And let's give this one up to uh, Ben. Is it positive or, or, sorry, what point should we plug in over here on the right? One. All and right. Positive. And it's positive. There's no negatives. Um, because, yeah, so there's no negatives in the equation, exactly. There's no way to get a minus sign. So that means it's what on the top? F increasing. F increasing. There we go. I did that all in red because that's the F prime test. The F double prime test, I'm going to do that all in orange. I like to color code my notes as much as I can. I'm getting better and better about that. Um, you can make another line if you want, or you could use the same line. I'm going to use the same line, and I'm just going to do a different color. If you don't like that, go ahead and make another line. But the trouble is you need to still be using, you still only know where it's decreasing and increasing. Um, all right, so still review. We need to look at what now? We found three things. We did three more things yesterday. Yeah. yeah. So where do I have relative extrema? On, 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 both CVs. on both CVs, yeah. So that was a CV, that was a CV, but those CVs are also, is this one a minimum or a maximum? maximum. Why is it a maximum? Because it's going from a positive to a negative. What's going from a positive to a negative? The sign. Yes, the signs of, sign of F, F prime, F prime, perfect. This CV is what? Minimum. A minimum. And someone aside from Rochelle, why is it a minimum? Couldn't have said it better myself. Yep, F prime is going from a negative to a positive. All right, so we have a bunch of things that we just found. We found relative extrema on top of the CVs. And now it is time for our new stuff. So the question is, where is this function concave up? Where is it concave down? Where are the inflection points? I want to know because that's the title of my notes. So how am I going to do that? What's the definition of F concave up? F double prime is greater than zero. What's the definition arrow of f concave down? And Rochelle, what's the definition of f inflection point? F double prime equals zero. Close. You're really close. It's more. It's kind of like the relative extrema, but with f double prime. Oh, on the sign changes. Of. Of f double prime. Yes, there it is. F double prime sign change. Cool. Those are all at the tips of our tongues. So I need to find those things. That means we needed to find F double prime. We did it right away anyway. We knew we were taking the F double prime test. So if I'm trying to find where the function is concave up and concave down, let's do those first. And then obviously the inflection point will follow from that because we'll see if the sign changes from the concavity. If the concavity changes, it is an inflection point. So when we do that, we're going to have to find where there's a possibility of an inflection point, which means I'm plugging zero in for F double prime. So over here on the right-hand side, I guess I should have put F double prime over here. I'll say that for my notes next time um, to make it more organized. But I'm gonna plug in zero for F double prime because that's where I might encounter an inflection point. It doesn't necessarily guarantee it's an inflection point because it might hit, if you're looking at the graph of um, F double prime, it might hit that x-axis and then come straight up. It might not pass through the x-axis. Um, it might uh, go from a negative to a negative or stay a positive to a positive. We don't know, but it might be. So that's why we're checking. So 0 is equal to 6x plus 4, which means x is equal to what class? The negative 2 thirds. Negative 2 thirds. Where is negative 2 thirds on our number line? Is it between 0 and negative 4 thirds, or is it left of negative 4 thirds? Yes, because negative four thirds is less than negative one, and negative two thirds is greater than negative one. Um, it's, it's confusing because it's negative, so I say greater than, and it actually just means that direction. So I know that's confusing, but we know it's somewhere over here, so we're going to make a new point wherever we have room. Um, or if you think that you're getting cramped up, uh, let's see, in my notes, did I. Small, so what's your definition of smaller? It is, yeah, so it is closer to the zero. That's a good way of saying it. I draw a new line, so I 
I think I'm going to draw a new x-axis as well because mine is getting pretty cramped. So I'm going to go down here. Here's my new x-axis. And label it with x as well. And we only have one point at negative two-thirds. What is this thing? And it's a trick question, so be careful. What is this thing? What did we just find? A possible inflection point. Oh my god, you actually got it. Yeah, it's a possible inflection point. It, because normally what we would do is we, we don't have a synonym for, um, for critical value with F double prime. There is no such thing. It's like a, a possible inflection point is the same thing as a CV is a possible relative extrema. But there's no actual word for critical value with the second derivative. So the only word that we have is possible inflection point. So we just found a possible inflection point, but we can't label it inflection point until we actually check the concavity on the left and the right. So let's do that. Let's check the concavity on the left and the right. Let's plug in something into the second derivative and see if we get a positive or a negative. What's a good value to plug in on the left? A negative one. What about on the right? Yeah, those are really good points. Zero. Um, let's plug in negative one into f double prime, and I get what? I get a negative, which means that this interval from negative infinity to negative two thirds, not including negative two thirds, because something weird happens there, is. It's, it's a negative. Yeah, you wrote positive. Oh, I wrote a positive. I don't. Yeah, sorry. Um, arrow. And Rochelle, you both got that at the same time in my perspective, so catch the extra credit tracker stuff, do that, yeah. It's an extra credit point, log it. All right, uh, it's negative, so therefore I do what? I say this interval is? Decreasing. What is decreasing? Concave down. Uh, so it's actually concave down, and the full phrase is F is concave down. And do I have a hyphen with concave down? I do. Concave down. Which is synonymous with f is decreasing, but with the first derivative. Now we're in the second derivative. We call that concave down. All right. Let's plug in 0 into f double prime. Plug in 0. You get positive or negative? Positive. Positive. Therefore, this interval, non-ben, someone other than ben? Concave up. f concave up. All right, now you can answer the question. Was this possible inflection point actually an inflection point? Arrow, what do you think? Yes. Why? Because the uh, sign changed. What sign? The sign of what? The sign of F double Yes, so say all, all together. Yes, or it's, is an inflection point because the sign of F double prime changed. Uh, yeah, perfect. You got it. You nailed it. So that is an inflection point. I guess I should have put f concave down a little bit more to the left to make this notes better, and I'll just write a note to myself. Put that to the left. All right. Um, yeah, that's basically all we got today. Um, we need to actually label those intervals to finish this up. So let's talk about what was the first thing that we found. This is a good review. F CV, CV. and what was F CV? Anyone? Negative four over three and three. Yep. And what? Is it is it an interval or is it actually equal to at that point? It's an interval. Or like it's, I think it's equal to x equals. Oh, equal to yes. Yeah. Yeah. X equal to negative four over three and zero. And zero. Okay. What was the next thing that we found? As you're writing this down, I know you can multitask. Oh. <laughs> the increase and decrease. F increase. <laughs> Someone else participate while we write it down. Go. Mr. Snell is going too fast. All right. Where is F increasing? On what interval is F increasing? Negative infinity to negative four over three. Union, uh, zero to infinity. Union, zero to infinity. I'll pause here. Ben, Arrow, what do you guys think? She, did she get it? All right. Let's write it in the other form interval notation. And again, I'm doing this just for the sake of practice. You can choose whichever one you want. I'm not going to force your hand on one way or the other because the AP test doesn't either. Right. In fact, can we all come to an agreement right now? Do you have a preferred method? Yes. Uh, I think it depends. There's sometimes it's easier to use one than the other. Okay, so let's just keep doing both then. Right. Some things are really cumbersome in one and easy in the other. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm.
Um, so this inequality notation for this interval is going to be what? So yeah, the discussion that we're having right now is it is it like this, oh. or is it like this? When we're we're about to do some other stuff over here, but which of these two is it? So we need to put x on the side that's not negative infinity, which would be x is greater than if it's the second one. Yeah. So x is greater than negative four thirds, but this one, the x interval, x lives between negative infinity and negative four thirds. So this x lives less than this negative four thirds. So somehow you need to say x is less than negative four thirds. So we just need to write x is less than negative four thirds, which is well, you, not one. Well, you could also do is negative four to three less than x, but greater than zero. We should just use the other notation all the time. <laughs> okay, so we're we're agreeing that this notation makes it so you don't have to get confused over here. Yes. All right, I agree. All right, so then coming back over here, f decreasing, what is the interval? Negative 4 over 3 to 0. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know why I did that. Negative 4 over 3 to 0. What's the next thing that we found? Uh, relative extrema. Relative extrema. Uh, where did that happen? At negative 4 over 3 and 0. Mm -hmm. Negative F 4 over 3. And zero. What was the next thing that we found? Max divisible. F max, F min. Ben, where was the max and min? Uh, the min was x equals zero, and the max is x equals negative four thirds. Yep, and that matches just, we're writing down what we have in our interval up here. And now we have another three things. Using our new color because we're on the second derivative test, our other new things are what? Our f is an inflection point, and then our concave up and down. Yep, f con concave up, f concave down, and f inflection point. Where were those things? Negative 2 over 3 to 2 infinity. Mm, yeah. Well, then, no, no, negative 2 over 3 is also infinity. All right. Yep, negative 2 over 3 to 2 infinity. I agree, Arrow. I agree, Rochelle. F concave down, therefore, is? Negative infinity to negative 2 over 3. Negative 2 over 3. And Ben, inflection point? X equals negative 2 thirds. Negative 2 thirds. All right. Cool. That is half, I would say, actually, like 80% of the notes. But in terms of the page, we have a backside. Questions on the front? You know how to do all nine of these things now? Yeah. So many things. Without a graph to help us anymore? All right. So I just want to talk about some tricks with E because there are going to be some questions on the homework and the test that have um, Euler's constant, Euler's number. I don't know exactly what the name, but it is named after Euler. He didn't name it after himself. Some other mathematician said, hmm, I'm going to name this E after Euler. And Euler is that guy in the top right, the arrow hung up in the classroom. It's kind of hard to see. He's the guy with the weird hat. There is a bit of glare, but Euler, he's cool. Oh, that hat. One of the most prominent mathematicians in the history of mathematics. All right, so I want to talk about if this thing can ever be negative or positive. That's the question. Can e to the x ever be negative, positive? Well, let's check. If we plug in 5, we're going to get what? f of 5 is e to the fifth. E to the fifth. Is that positive or negative? Probably. Probably. Yes. Let's check if 
we, I don't even think we need to write that because you guys know function notation. Let's try f of negative 10. Oh, do a negative number. What is that going to be? Positive or negative? It's still positive. It's still positive. Is it? Yes, it is. How do you know it's positive? Because the negative just makes it a fraction. It just makes it a fraction, but not negative. Exactly. We know our rules of exponents. Good. It just makes it a fraction. This now turns into 1 over e to the power of 10, which is still bigger than 0, which means that this thing will always be positive. Um, so I guess I didn't need to write it up there, but um, f of <laughs> 5 is positive. I should look at my guided notes, Mr. Sindel. That's positive. e to the x can never be negative just by itself. But if I have some number... And usually it's not a number. Usually it's just like a negative out front. But the derivative of e to the negative x will be negative. Ah, yeah, that's true. It'll be negative e to the negative. When you take the derivative, it does change things. And that's when you get that number out front. It's been seen that already. So if I have that number out front, that number might be negative 1. It might be negative e to the power of x. If I have that number out front, e, this function will always be the sine of a. So if it's negative 2 e to the x, it will always be negative. If it's 3 e to the x, it will always be positive. You take the sign of whatever is out in front. And here is the key part also. And that the reason that I started this is this part. It will never be negative, and I should say this correctly, nor 0. That's the key part. You will never get a critical value from this guy. Ever. Because it will never be zero. So if f prime equals e to the x, no critical values? No critical values. And specifically, what's going to happen on the homework and on the fix-ups and stuff is you're going to have something that factors as e to the x times some polynomial like x squared plus 1. And you're going to have to check both of them. Does, I don't know what that happens. Does this one? Okay, so I, and you, have you had e to the x? Okay, well, I guess I should have gone over this in the previous notes. Yeah, I don't know if you put six. That's why I couldn't be. Ah, well, but anyway, I'll make a note to myself to do this earlier. <laughs> this thing, don't worry about because you'll never get zero. So just cross it out. Don't worry about it. This thing will give you a zero. Actually, this one won't because it's, <laughs> it's a weird number. But if I change this to minus one, now it will give you zero. So don't worry about that one. This one will now give you zero. So be careful with that one. What number would give you zero? Plug in what for x and you get zero? Two numbers will give you zero. One. And? One. Yep, one and negative one will give you zero. So those will be your CVs. Or inflection points, possible inflection points if you're dealing with the second derivative for this. Oh, I see why. All right. Questions? All right, that concludes the notes.